Oh, I'm Michael Aaron. With us this week, four people who probably wouldn't mind if Reporters Roundtable provided its guests with a clothing allowance. The always well-dressed Angela Delasanti of the Associated Press and Lisa Fleischer of the Wall Street Journal. Not so sure about John Mooney of NJSpotlight.com or Phil Gregory of WHYY and WBGO Radio. A war of words erupted Wednesday when Governor Christie told reporters they should take out the bat on Loretta Weinberg for criticizing him, for not criticizing strongly enough Joe DiVincenzo, the Essex County executive, for taking a pension and a salary for the same job when Weinberg was doing it herself. Here's how Jim Hooker reported it on Thursday night's NJN News. It's long, but we think it's necessary. I mean, come on. I mean, there's got to be at some point, at some point, no matter how long you've been around here, the hypocrisy meter's got to tilt on her. The governor was on a roll yesterday at his press conference that started out as an announcement on a package of bills he wants for teacher reforms. But as has become the custom at these things, he then opened it up to a wide-ranging news conference that eventually turned to public pension double-dipping, and that's where Senator Weinberg came in. She voluntarily put herself in the line of fire by contributing to that story. Voluntarily put herself in the line of fire. The governor was riffing on Weinberg, who was quoted in a Sunday Star-Ledger article, criticizing him for not being harsh enough on the Essex County Executive's pension double dip, which ignited the entire issue in the first place last week. At one point, Governor Christie accused the press of going too easy on certain public officials, and that's where the remark that offended Weinberg and her fellow Democrats came in. As you can see from folks like Loretta Weinberg, who, by the way, I mean, if you guys don't give Loretta Weinberg the hypocrisy award, I mean, she's in that Sunday story on Joe D in the Star Ledger, you know, just beating the Jesus out of me over this while she knows that she did it. I mean, can you guys please take the bat out on her for once? I mean, here's a woman who knows she did it, yet she comes to you and is pining about, you know, oh, my goodness, how awful this is. What a double standard when she's the queen of the double standard. In a statement issued today, Weinberg took off on the governor's criticism. Most disturbingly, she wrote, Governor Christie used the words, take a bat out on her in his admonishment of the press corps to make hay over my pension. Frankly, considering I've devoted my entire legislative career to fighting for the rights of women, including battered women, I think his words continue to show the level of insensitivity and poor judgment that the governor has demonstrated on women's issues since getting elected. Asked to respond, the governor's press secretary fired back in an email, it's ridiculous and a crude contextual distortion, said Mike Druniak. Anyone in the room knew it was about media and their soft treatment of the issue of pension double dipping by Senator Weinberg and nothing else. But a number of Weinberg's fellow Democrats came out in support of her, including the Senate president, Steve Sweeney. In no way, shape, or form should the phrase take the bat out be used on anyone, Sweeney wrote, much less someone who has dedicated her public life to helping women, children, and working families. The statement, he continued, was offensive, indecent, and so far beneath the standing of a public official, it boggles the mind how the governor could even think of uttering it. Phil Gregory, let me start with you. Did the governor get himself into any long-term trouble with this statement? Well, it's hard to tell, but um, as you know, Christie has not been reluctant to, to go off script. And when you throw these kind of hardballs, uh, sooner or later somebody's going to cry foul, and that's what's happening here. Um, you've heard uh, several Democrats uh, say this was an inappropriate statement, not very statesmanlike, uh, calling for Christie to make an apology. I believe it was... Uh, uh, Larry Huddle and uh, Connie Wagner, who uh, came out and urged their colleagues to join in this. It's creating a bit of a flap now. The long-term effect, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, do you think, either of you, that he, he, he'll apologize? No. No? <laughs> no. I mean, it was even by his, his standards, it, it caught us. We, we were sitting there, and he said it, and it would, you know, I was sort of struck by it, and, and uh, there was a little bit of a pause in the room. I, I wrote down in my notebook as it was happening, reporters roundtable. We got to get yeah, used to I this mean, on roundtable. Go I ahead. I mean, even you know, by his rhetoric standards, it was it was a uh, a bit more than usual. But I don't, you know, it, it, it's still along the lines his combative self, and I can't imagine him stepping back on it. 
I, I think he knew from the time he uttered it, though, that it was had the potential of taking on a life of its own, and I think it's it's doing a bit of that in terms of whether it's going to stick. What, what makes you think that he knew it would take on a life? I'm of not its sure own. that he knew it, but I think everyone in the room did. Uh, okay. And uh, I think you know, obviously, he's not shied away from these types of remarks in the past, but I think it will at least uh, remain. Uh, in a story for the next few days because the letter that the two assembly women, uh, Veneri Huddle and Connie Wagner, sent out today to all of their colleagues of both parties in both houses of the legislature ask them to join in in condemning the remark and demanding a retraction and an apology. And they gave the lawmakers until Wednesday afternoon to reply. So, uh, you know, I, I think at that point, the, obviously, all the Democrats, or most of the Democrats, will be on board, but the Republicans, uh, not so sure. Your take on this? Well, I'll just mention uh, two pieces that were sort of written that have to do with this. Um, Ginger Gibson of the Star Ledger wrote a piece, I believe it was in the magazine, um, about Christie's vice presidential uh, possibilities. And I think some people that she had spoken with mentioned that he's prone to gaffes or what some people perceive as gaffes like this. And, um, you know, I think there was a line, like, if you think Joe Biden, you know, it says, un, you know, unpredictable things, you should you know, wait until you hear Chris Christie. So that was, and then Rich Lee, uh, former, I believe, McGreevy. Um, That's right. Spokesman. At the Hall Institute. Right. He had written a column that said that, uh, you know, it doesn't really mean much for New Jersey. I mean, we're all used to uh, Republicans and Democrats sending out blasts of press releases, blasting each other for this or that. And then, you know, I'm wondering when's the next time that a, a Democrat's going to say something like this and we'll see it again from the Republicans. But, uh, you know, Rich Lee's point was that perhaps longer term, you know, people who are looking at him as a potential vice presidential, uh, not, you know, running mate might look at this and say, mm, I'm not so sure. An intemperate remark. I had a bunch of thoughts. I just want to throw a few things out on the table. First of all, imagine Chris Christie going home uh, and uh, some super ego advisor saying to him, what part of tone down the rhetoric don't you understand? <laughs> um, the fact that what we love about Chris Christie, his big mouth, uh, his colorful language, can occasionally get him into trouble. Um, Imagine him as president of the United States. You, you bring up vice president. People talk about him as president. Imagine, imagine him standing up there in the White House uh, saying, saying something like this about Harry Reid. Um, I, I don't, I, maybe he's smart enough to know that what plays in Trenton wouldn't play in Washington necessarily, or maybe that would entertain the Washington press corps the way it entertains us. Um, Sheila Oliver put out a statement this morning uh, jumping on this. Uh, it, it also brings to mind, first of all, I thought Michael Druniak made a, a good point. We all in the room, we didn't think, ooh, bat. Uh, did we? I mean, I, 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 ooh, he's urging us to exercise vi violence on her. I didn't think, I didn't take it that way, did you? You're a woman, maybe you did. I thought the metaphor was one of violence. I, I, I don't know that, I, I didn't think that, oh, he meant it literally necessarily, but when you say to take a bat to someone, that implies be harsh. In the, in the media context, take a bat. Be critical. Be critical, be harsh. Be right. critical on her. He right. didn't say beat her up. No, he did okay. not, of course not. Uh, at the same time, while Druniak is saying everyone understands he was just talking in the media context, uh, talk about double standards. When Joe Coppola, the Bergen County Education Association president a year ago, s prayed for his death in a private message, the governor took it seriously and didn't put it in the context of a joke and demanded that uh, Coppola be fired. And now maybe there's a double standard there. Here, here he wants to be let off by the context, but there he wanted the guy held to the literal meaning of what he said. And he that's a said, great point. Yeah. Is that a good point? Yeah, I mean, it is. Point. I'm trying to think, I've been trying to think of like other examples of this. And like I said, there's going to be a time when a Democrat says something. Steve Sweeney is not known to like, you know, be too careful with his words either. And then we'll see the opposite of this. But that's a good example. And he has continued, I mean, I'm glad you raised that. He's continued to use that as the reason he won't talk to the NJEA. 
until that guy is fired, which they can't fire. He's an elected uh, official for the for the union. But he has said that as recently as a month ago that he won't talk to them until he, that guy's fired. So well, they, they can pressure him to step down. But one more could. thing yeah, I want to say could. about this whole issue is that it's kind of getting it's it's completely shifting the debate away from w w the actual question here, w which is was Loretta Weinberg in the article? Um, That's a good you know, point too. Was she she was criticizing Christie's uh, non criticism of Joe Day? All right. She wasn't saying, oh, this pension double dipping is wrong. She wasn't saying, uh, you know, she, she probably, for all I know, could say, um, Christy should not only criticize me, but everyone else, you know, here. And uh, so we're just, we've, we've sort of lost where the original um, point and, of all this and, came and, from. And I want to the question of her pension. Uh, we know that she's a very active legislator. She's earning $49,000 a year as a legislator to collect a $37,000 pension on top of that is not such a, uh, an egregious amount of money for someone who works as hard as she does. Unlike some of the other pensions we've been reading about, the, the Bergen County Sheriff, Michael Saudino, is a former Emerson, Emerson police chief. Uh, between his salary and his pension, I just read this morning in a Jim Ahern column in the Bergen Record, he's making $270,000 a year about 70,000 more than the Attorney General of the United States is making. So uh, all of this, uh, the context uh, is everything, I guess. Well, Go ahead. There are two points here. I think that uh, Senator Weinberg explained that the reason she had to tap into her pension was because she lost pretty much her life savings in, uh, in a Ponzi scheme through Bernie Madoff. And Christie said, stop hiding behind Bernie Madoff. Go ahead. And the other thing that's been obscured in this debate is that um, a member of the governor's, or well, the cabinet secretary for the governor is also a, a retiree who's collecting a pension who is working for the governor. And the governor defended that as saying, you know, the, the state of New Jersey is getting a, a great person with a lot of experience. That's Lou Getting, who's also getting over $200,000 a year as a result of salary and pension. And that's what set this whole thing off was when right. somebody brought up Lou Getting and the governor defended right. his, his coming back into state service right. after he had retired. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I don't think that anybody was questioning Lou Getting's qualifications or experience or what he brings to the administration, but the, the, the issue remains, you know, it, where 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 is the line drawn between people who come back into public service or, or who are collecting pensions and still doing the jobs? But look, I mean, that's a com that to be fair, that is a different issue as well because he's not doing the same job right. that he is getting the pension for. I mean, there's the, the pension system so complicated. You could probably you know there's a lot of things you could criticize in that. Right. Right. Which is what I, why I say where's the line? All right, exactly. last, right. last question on this before we move on. Um, I can imagine us still talking about this in a few weeks. At the Correspondence Club. Oh, at the Correspondence <laughs> Club. Yeah, there we go. Maybe we need a Loretta Weinberg song that night. Um, can you all, or, 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 I asked Phil initially, you know, does this thing have legs or not? What do you think? I don't, I mean, I, I wonder. He, the, he, he, he steps it up every time, and, and I just imagine we'll be back uh, sitting before him at another press conference where he, you know, goes off on somebody else, and I just, uh, I, I think this one does seem to have, I mean, it, he, as I said, he, he, he stepped it up a little more, and I think it caught us all by a little, a little bit by surprise, but I think he'll, he'll do it again at another occasion. And it is entertaining, is it not? Um, they, those press conferences in general are pretty entertaining. Yes. You never quite know where they're going to go. Go ahead. It's also part of a pattern, though. Uh, you know, we saw him criticize pretty harshly Frank Lautenberg during the Arc Tunnel debate. We saw him criticize Bonnie Watson Coleman after she grilled his school's development authority person, and now we're seeing him go after Loretta Weinberg. So I do think that there, there is a pattern of the governor taking on his critics in a I harsh way. I think it will make for, for some continued play between the Republicans and the Democrats on... Uh, what kind of decorum should be involved in overall politics for, for the folks at home? Will it really make a long-term difference? Probably not. All right, let's move on. Uh, on that, about an hour before all that statement, the governor laid out the seven bills to.